Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Sramani Tanami Namaste Sarsavi Devi Gauravani Pachamani Namaste Sarsavi Devi Pashkati Vesita Om Ginnati Namrasya Dhanajana Sabakaya Saksu Samanitana Jina Tatsumani Sri Guru Vedi Sri Chaitanya Manavistam Stavitam Jina Bhutale Sayam Bhagavadami Nadati Sahabhata Master Kopo Kipas Chai, Kipas Nidu Bhai Kaza, Kitanam Kambadish, Vice President. This is my old friend Sarup. I haven't seen him probably in 50 years. <laughs> you on your way to Chapel Hill. Hare Krishna. Before saying a few words about Ramananda Prabhu, I'd like to say something about um, uh, Gaudamuni. And um, when I visited him after Brahmananda's Prabhu's passing, um, we all know that Prabhupada called Gogamuni Gogamani. And um, Gogamuni Prabhu told me, people misunderstand why Prabhupada called me that. And he told me how when Prabhupada first um, called him that, it's because Gogamuni came in and gave Prabhupada so much money. And every time he would see Prabhupada, he would give him money. And therefore he called him Gaga money. It was due to, it was not, it was just teasing. It wasn't at all teasing. It was just um, Prabhupada's affectionate reciprocation. And, um, and how devoted this person is, the Srila Prabhupada. And, um, he would probably be the first one to say that he learned it from his elder brother. But that's God only. And then also I'd like to say something about um, Guru Kripa Prabhu. When he said that um, that these people here, they earn their place in Prabhupada's heart. Um, it didn't just come. It came through such dedicated service. So Guru Kripa and Krishna Bhadara Mandya I remember hearing him speak on Prabhupada's disappearance day a few years ago and he saw that Prabhupada was, in, he walked into Prabhupada's room and Prabhupada was in anxi anxiety about how is he going to get the money to build Krishna Balaram Mandia. And Guru Kripa said, don't worry Prabhupada, I'll give it to you, I'll get it for you, don't worry at all. Um, maybe not saying it exactly the way it happened, but this is more or less what happened. And Guru Kripa told me that he walked out. He had no idea where he was going to get the money from, but he had a full determination that he was going to do it for the service of Srila Prabhupada. So these, these people, were, um, one by one, they, were, they all have this, this such, <laughs> such different personalities, <laughs> but the, the, this one common point is their full devotion at the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada. And, um, and Brahmananda was, was really... Um, if you read the book, if you didn't know him personally, um, if you read his book, um, it is, just as Gagamuni Prabhu said, it is, the, um, it is a love story. But it, it's a love story where, where this one person, at a very young age, he gave his heart to Prabhupada, and he never deviated or, or wavered in the slightest from that. And um, no matter what happened through thick and thin, good times and bad times, he was always Prabhupada's. And, and therefore, as has been rightly said, that's obviously where he is. And um, that's obviously where he is. One, one day in Vrindavan, um, just I was walking somewhere and Brahmananda was, um, he was at the barber's. And he was, it was just before Prabhupada's disappearance day, it was many, many years ago, and he was getting his head shaved. And, and he had this look in his eyes that's very hard to describe. It was just, it was, he wasn't really there, but he was, it was, he was intoxicated, and his eyes were sort of, sort of rolling, practically speaking. This was in the barber shop, <coughs> right before, sitting on the, one of those wooden stalls, dukans. And I, I, I said something to him, and he just started talking about Prabhupada. And he was, um, that was, that was Brahmananda, he was, he was really in, in Samadhi um, at the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada. 
Um, Brahmananda Prabhu was the one in Montreal in 1968. He, uh, when Srila Prabhupada um, gave me uh, initiation, he tied my neck beads um, around my neck. And, um, and Prabhupada told me at that time, um, these are like a, a dog collar. Um, yeah, so many, so many things that Prabhupada did had their, had their mystical proportions to them, and one didn't understand exactly the depth of the meaning of them, maybe until years and years and years and years and years later. Um, Brahmananda's relationship with Srila Prabhupada had, had a very mystical part to it too. It was very, very, very practical, but it had a mystical element as well. Um, Brahmananda told me that told me this at 61 Second Avenue that because I had hurt my ankle and I couldn't walk, so Brahmananda told me that that once he he had some leg problem and he couldn't walk, and then the phone rang, and somehow he struggled his way, crawled his way to the phone, and um, and it was Prabhupada on the phone, and then after that he could walk. <laughs> yes, which <laughs> amazing. And and um, Guru P Kripapu mentioned um, the first time he saw Prabhupada at um, at the San Francisco Rathiatra in 1970, when Prabhupada, when Brahmananda was bringing the Krishna books to Prabhupada, um, and I was on the other end of that. I was in Tokyo in 1969 and 1970, and. Um, and and somehow or another I was just there with Sudama and um, his wife at that time was was Chintamani. And they had gone to Seoul, Korea to get their visa. And I was alone in, in the Ginza in Tokyo, um, distributing back to Godhead magazines. And suddenly <laughs> in the middle of the Ginza, suddenly this huge fellow appears in these blue oversized pants that he got on Canal Street. You remember those? <laughs> and, and suddenly Brahmananda comes out with no, no, he just came out of, of the crowds and he had landed in, in Tokyo to publish the Krishna book, but he had no idea where our temple was or anything like that. And the temple was, at that moment, it was just me anyway. And, and um, he came over and embraced and um, and then uh, and then he had he had come for the Krishna book, and then a few days later Sudama came, and just all night long, for the all for hours and hours, um, they would just talk about Prabhupada, and it was it was the most um, it, it was it reminded me so much of um, the devotees of Mahaprabhu who had just become completely enlivened and we were caught up in their, their um, the, the, the whirlpool of, of their of affectionate love for Srila Prabhupada. And then one in Tokyo at that time, um, Brahmananda sometimes slept late, a little late. So one day I decided I was going to ask him to wake up a little earlier. So I, so I, I, I went in, and maybe he had just awoken or something like that. So I, so I said, Brahmananda, I was about to tell him something. You know, Brahmananda, what are you? And then he said, I just had this most amazing dream that there was this elevator on in a building, and and I was with Prabhupada, and he got into the elevator, and then I couldn't get into the elevator with Prabhupada, and then he went down, and I ran down the stairs. And I saw Prabhupada walking, walking away. And I said, then what happened, Brahmananda? He said, then you came in and woke me up. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that was the, the last time for, for that one. But Brahmananda, did so, he, during that particular visit, he really was fully determined to have the Krishna book published. And there were so many problems. So he was dealing with Dinapan, and every day they would send, they would send a, a car, a luxury vehicle to to pick him up, and he would go there, and and he would 
pushed them and pushed them and pushed them because it was like a month and a half or so and to get this whole book published from beginning to end so he had the proofs and he had to work out the, the photographs and he didn't know how he was going to get the photographs to fit in the book, the color <coughs> printing and everything like that, but Prabhupada wanted it and Prabhupada wanted it and he put, he, um, in his, using his, his spiritual potency, he actually got the books done and he was so overjoyed because he was going to be able to deliver them to Srila Prabhupada <coughs> at that Rath Yatra and, and um, he had some sample copies he actually did that and that was such a his whole life was, was in that that type of, of service mood um, just a few other because there are so many devotees who would like to say things about Brahmananda Prabhu um, one, of, one of the one of the things I liked most about Brahmananda was his writing also. And there, there's one BTG article that he wrote in the very, very early days when Prabhupada had, um, he just left, he had just left New York to go to India for the, to recover his health after the, the heart attack. And um, there was an article that he wrote and probably most everyone has has read it, but about how the Prabhupada gets on the plane and everyone's waiting at the airport and Prabhupada tells Himavati that that um, you'll you come to Vrindavan and you'll learn how to carry a water pot on your head and you won't see the whoosh 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 of motor cars. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Um, but then there's a description of Prabhupada getting on on the plane. They are in the plane taking off, and 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 the devotees just um, in a tear, tearful way, just watching that plane until it could no longer be seen and it vanishing in the distance. And it was so, it was so so touching. I remember reading it so many times. But then when reading in the um, first in the Krishna book about when the um, how the gopis after Krishna left Vrindavan, how they just watched the chariot just go into the distance. They were as still as moving, as painted pictures. And they just watched Krishna. They had their, their pranamath had left and they just watched it. They lost their ability to move. And it was, it was so, if, if Brahmananda hadn't written that before the Krishna book, years before the Krishna book had been published, before anyone in his country knew anything about Krishna, the only thing we knew about Krishna and the gopis were that the, the, the young ladies, the young um, Matajis who were dancing at 26 Second Avenue were the gopis. They were, dancing, they were like called the gopis and the... And the um, and the rain falling from the sky, Prabhupada said, was the gopis, like the gopis' tears of separation from Krishna. But no one knew anything. And Brahmananda had written this that was um, that was uh, was so deep, and it was so it was so parallel. It was um, it was very mystical, actually. Um, His Holiness Guru Raj has agreed to. Um, that I read his, his offering on this day, so I'll do that. And then, uh, so this is from His Holiness Guru Rajraj, who, due to ill health, was unable to be here today. One thing was certain in my mind, <coughs> that I would be present for the dedication of Brahmananda Prabhu Samadhi in Vrindavan. But, as Srila Prabhupada said, I have my plans, you have your plans, and Krishna has his plans. Brahmananda Prabhu left his body on the appearance day of Vakeshwar Pandit, one of Lord Chaitanya's most dear associates. A contemporary of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu named Devananda Pandit had no faith in Mahaprabhu and thus avoided him. But fortunately, Devananda Pandit developed great faith in Vakeshwar Pandit and rendered service to him. And by Vakeshwar Pandit's mercy, he developed faith in Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and it ultimately achieved his shelter. 
Concerning this incident, Sri Chaitanya Bhagavata confirms the efficacy of serving pure devotees and the results one attains by doing so. The service of Vaishnavas is superior to the service of Krishna. All scriptures headed by Srimad Bhagavatam confirm this. There may be a doubt whether the servants of the Supreme Personality of Godhead will attain perfection, but there is absolutely no doubt that those who are attached to serving the Lord's devotees will attain perfection. This is a quotation, this was a quotation. Therefore, service to the Vaishnavas is the best means of deliverance. Brahmananda Prabhu had such faith in Srila Prabhupada's service, and thus we are confident of his deliverance and ultimate destination. Much has been said and will be said about Brahmananda Prabhu's extraordinary love for and service to Srila Prabhupada. His attachment to Srila Prabhupada was so great that any association with him, whether by Vani or Vapu, markedly increased my loving feelings for Srila Prabhupada. The last time I met Brahmananda Prabhu in Vrindavan, I mentioned that for decades, I had been getting messages from Srila Prabhupada that Brahmananda would be going back to Godhead at the end of his life. Well, he replied, it's funny you said that, because that's not the message I've been getting, which I take as his humility. Just after Brahmananda Prabhu left, I heard a prayer offered to Lord Chaitanya that seemed to reflect his mood in relation to Srila Prabhupada and the mood for which I aspire, birth after birth, you are our father, mother, son, and master. May we never forget your lotus feet. O oh Lord, it does not matter where we take birth, but may we always have loving devotion for your lotus feet. In any case, Brahmananda Prabhu was with Srila Prabhupada, engaged in his service, and that's all I or any of us could ask. And knowing that Brahmananda Prabhu was with Srila Prabhupada is an added impetus and incentive and an added attraction. <coughs> Brahmananda Prabhu, may your example of dedication to your spiritual master and kindness to others inspire us in our service to Srila Prabhupada and his devotees. Please think kindly upon us and keep us close to your lotus feet that we may engage in everlasting service to our eternal Lord and master in the association of all his beloved servants, your eternal aspiring servant, Swami. One thing that Brahmananda Prabhu told me at 61 Second Avenue, um, after after the teachings of Lord Chaitanya had first been published, he told me that Prabhupada told him, anyone who turns his books into money will go back to Godhead. <laughs> uh, 